Let's practice dividing integers and rational numbers together. Okay, so for these first four problems, what we're gonna do is we are going to make a statement and say that each of these are going to be always, sometimes, or never positive. For number one, we have the statement, a positive number divided by a positive number. So here's a couple quick examples I'm gonna make up to uh, prove a point, right? So if we have a positive 27 divided by something like a positive three, that's gonna equal positive nine. Or if you have something like positive 24 divided by a positive two, that would equal a positive 12, right? Now you can keep coming up with more examples, but if you always take a positive number and divide by another positive number, you're always going to get a positive number. So this is going to be always positive. For number two, we have a positive number divided by a negative number, okay? So if we have a positive number like 36, and then we divide that by a negative number, maybe something like negative three, then that's actually going to equal negative 12, okay? So if 36 divided by three is 12, then 36 divided by the opposite of three is going to be the opposite of 12. Similarly, if we took another number, something like maybe 45, and we divide that by a negative nine, well, if 45 divided by nine is five, then 45 divided by negative nine is going to be a negative five. Whenever you take a positive number and divide by a negative number, you're gonna get a number that is never positive. In number three, our statement is a negative number divided by a positive number. So let's take a negative number like this, maybe negative 48. If we divide by a positive number, maybe something like six, then we're gonna get, that's gonna be, well, 48 divided by six is eight. So the opposite of 48 divided by six should be the opposite of eight or negative eight. If we have something like negative, hmm, negative 56, and let's divide by something like seven, negative 56 divided by seven, well, what's 56 divided by seven? That's eight, but it's the opposite of 56, so it's gonna be the opposite of eight. So you can see here that in both of these examples, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and we can generalize and say that that's always going to be a negative answer, or we can say that a negative divided by a positive is never going to be positive. Whether we are taking a positive number and dividing by a negative number, or taking a negative number and dividing by a positive number, we are never going to get a positive answer, or our quotient is always going to be negative, however you want to think about it. For number four, we have a negative number divided by a negative number. So maybe some a couple examples here would be something like negative 15 divided by a negative three. Well, 15 divided by three is equal to five, but we have the opposite of the opposite of five, and that's just going to be positive five, right? The opposite of the opposite just stays the same. Or maybe if we took something like negative 20 and we divide that by negative two, well, 20 divided by two is equal to 10. So the opposite of 20 divided by the opposite of two or the opposite of the opposite would just be a still a positive 10. So whenever you take a negative number and divide by another negative number, you are always going to get a positive quotient. So if you look at statement number one and statement number four, if you have a positive divided by a positive, you're always going to get a positive answer. And in number four, a negative divided by a negative is always going to be positive, right? Those two negatives are going to cancel each other out to get a positive, or the opposite of the opposite is just the original. All right, moving from five on, we're just gonna go ahead and divide each of these integers. So there's not a whole lot of work to write here. So for some of them, you're gonna be able to do them in your head and others you may need to do some long division, okay? But again, let's try to ignore the minus signs or the opposite signs and just divide and then think about what the signs should be afterwards, okay? So for number five, we have 18 divided by three, that's equal to six. Don't have to worry too much. Positive divided by positive, always positive. For number six, we have 18 divided by negative three. Well, that's one opposite, so the answer has to be the opposite of six. For number seven, we have negative 18 divided by positive three. 18 divided by three, again, is six, and we have the opposite of 18, so we should have the opposite of six. For number eight, we still have 18 and three, so it's negative 18 divided by negative three. 18 divided by three is just six, but we have the opposite of the opposite, so again, the opposite of the opposite is just gonna cancel out here, and so we just get positive six. Or think back to earlier that a negative divided by a negative is always positive. For number nine, we have 24 divided by negative six. 
Well, 24 divided by 6 is 4, and we have one opposite symbol, so the answer is the opposite of 4, or negative 4. For number 10, we have negative 56 divided by 8. Well, 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7, so the opposite of 56, or negative 56 divided by 8, will be the opposite of 7, or negative 7. We move on to this next one here. We take a look at number 11, if we have 63 divided by negative 7. Well, 63 divided by 7 is 9, so 63 divided by the opposite of 7 would be the opposite of 9. For number 12, we have negative 45 divided by negative 9, and so this is going to be 45 divided by 9, which is equal to 5, but we have the opposite of the opposite here, so the opposite of the opposite is going to be just a positive 5. Here's number 13. For 13, we have negative 81 divided by positive 9, so 81 divided by 9 is equal to 9, and we have the opposite of 81, so we should have the opposite of 9 for our quotient. For number 14, we have 72 divided by negative 4. Well, what's 72 divided by 4? Now, some people may be able to do this in their head, but I think it's also helpful for others to see. I'm going to go ahead and write this out. And uh, if you need to do long division, you should also. And also, you should practice your long division to get a little faster at it and more fluent. 4 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. And let's bring down this 2. So we have 32. 4 times 8 is going to be 32. And the remainder is 0. So it goes in evenly. So 72 divided by 4 is going to equal 18, but it's the opposite of 4, so our quotient should be the opposite of 18, or negative 18. For number 15, we have negative 135 divided by a negative 9, so let's ignore those minus signs or negative signs right now. And we have 135 divided by 9, I'm just going to go ahead and write it out here. And so 9 fits into 13 one time, 1 times 9 is 9, 13 minus 9 is 4, bring down this 5. Now we have 45, and 5 times 9 is 45, and the remainder here is 0, so it goes in evenly. So we know 135 divided by 9 is 15, but is it positive or negative 15? Well, we had two negatives, so the opposite of the opposite of 15 is just going to be positive 15. Okay, take a look at number 16 here. We have 144 divided by negative 12. Well, 144 divided by 12, maybe we have to write that out unless we know our 12 times tables. Okay, so let's put 144 on the inside and 12 on the outside. 12 fits into 14 once. 1 times 12 is 12. Remainder of 2 when we subtract and bring down the 4. 12 times 2 is 24, and that gets you a remainder of 0. So if you knew 12 times 12 was 144, then that's great. You have an, a quotient here of 12. And because we have the opposite of 12, we should have the opposite of 12 for our quotient. Okay, moving on to number 17, we have negative 96 divided by negative 6. So let's see, what is 96 divided by 6? I'm going to go ahead and write it out just in case. Uh, so 6 goes into 9 one time. 1 times 6 is 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. Bring down this 6. 6 times 6 is 36. We get a remainder of 0. So 96 divided by 6 is 16, and because we had two negatives, the opposite of the opposite of 16 is just positive 16. For number 18, we have 84 divided by negative 7. Let's just figure out what 84 divided by 7 is. Now 7 times 1 is going to be 7. We have a remainder of 1. We have 14 at the bottom here. Now 7 times 2 is exactly 14, so it's 14, and then we have a remainder of 0 here. So 84 divided by negative 7, instead of saying that's going to be 12, we're going to say it's the opposite of 12 or negative 12 because we had one negative sign in our problem. Okay. For number 19, we have a negative divided by a negative. It's 99 divided by 11. Uh, I think this one is probably maybe more widely known that 11 times 9 is 99. And the answer here is going to be positive because we have two negative signs, right? The opposite of the opposite of 9 is just positive 9. Finally, for number 20, we have 180 divided by negative 12. So let's go ahead and just figure out what 180 divided by 12 is. Okay, so 180 divided by 12. Let's go ahead and write that long division. 12 times 1 is going to be 12. 18 minus 12 has a remainder of 6. Bring down the 0. Turns out 12 times 5 is going to be 60. We get a remainder of 0. So we know 180 divided by 12 is 15. So 180 divided by the opposite of 12 will be the opposite of 15. Now let's take a look at some rational numbers. So let's practice working with some decimals and fractions together. 
For number 21, we have a decimal divided by a whole number here or integer. So we have 5.4 divided by three. So let's go ahead and make sure we feel comfortable with this. So 5.4 is gonna go inside the division house as the dividend, three is the divisor, and this decimal comes straight up. Three times one is going to be three. That's as close as we can get. Five minus three is two, bring down this four. Now three into 24 is gonna be eight times. Eight times three is 24. Our remainder here is zero. So when we take 5.4 and divide it by three, that's equal to 1.8 and it's gonna be positive, okay? Moving on to number 22. Well, this is just going to be a negative 5.4 divided by three. So it's the opposite of 5.4. So we're gonna have the opposite of 1.8 for our quotient, okay? For number 23, we have the same numbers, but you can see the negative moved over. So 5.4 divided by negative three, it's going to be negative 1.8 because we have one opposite symbol. So we have the opposite of 1.8. For number 24, we have 5.4 and three again. So again, 5.4 divided by three, we said was 1.8, but it's gonna stay positive because we have here the opposite of the opposite of 1.8, and that's going to be positive 1.8. Okay, moving on to number 25. For 25, we have this 23.8 and we're gonna divide that by this negative 3.5. Let's figure out what that's equal to. And so we're gonna go ahead and do some division, right? So uh, to divide, we have to make sure that this number over here, this uh, 3.5 is a whole number. So if we multiply this by 10 and multiply this by 10, really we're looking at here of saying this is going to be 238 divided by negative 35. Right, that's the same thing. So we have to make sure we slide those decimals over and let's go ahead and see what this long division would look like. We have 238 divided by 35. Now let's see here, 35 won't fit into two, won't fit into 23. So let's see, uh, 35 times what? Let's go with maybe, hmm, let me try six here. So five times six is gonna be 30, carry the three. Six times three is 18 plus three is 21. Now that's gonna be 210, which is pretty close to 238. I don't think we can fit another 35, so let's put a six here. Six times 35 is going to be 210, as we just found out. The remainder here is going to be, looks like 28, okay? Now where's the decimal? The decimal is over here after the eight, so bring it straight up. We can add a zero after the decimal, and bring it down. And now it's how many times does 35 fit into 280? So let's see, 35, let's try eight here. Uh, five times eight is going to be 40, put the zero, carry the four. Eight times three is 24, plus four is going to be 28. So that's 280 on the dot. So eight times 35 is gonna be 280. And the remainder here is zero. So we have a final quotient here of 6.8. But try to remember here that we had one opposite symbol. So if 23.8 divided by 3.5 is 6.8, then if we have the opposite of 3.5, we should have the opposite of 6.8. Here's number 26. For number 26, we have negative 122 and 106 thousandths or 0 0.106 divided by negative 4.7 or negative four and seven tenths. Now again, this is the decimal that we wanna make a whole number. So if we multiply this by 10, we can slide the decimal over one time. So we have to also make sure we slide this one over by one decimal place and multiply it by 10 as well. So this is gonna become a negative 47 if we multiply it by 10. And this is going to be a negative 1221.06. So again, if we go ahead and solve this problem, we're going to get the same answer here, okay? So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and put an equal sign here so we know we're gonna put our answer. And then let's try taking this 1221.06, and let's divide that by 47, okay? So let's give that a try here. Now, 47 is not going to fit into one or 12, but how many times will it fit into 122? Now, let's see here, 47, if we multiply that by two, that's going to be 14, carry the one. That's 94. What's 47 times three? That's gonna be 21, carry the two. Three times four is 12, plus two is 14. So 141 is too much, so we have to go with a two here. Two times 47, we said was 94. So let's go ahead and subtract here. So what's 122 minus 94? Uh, let's see, 122 minus 94 is gonna be, that's an eight, and that would become an 11 minus nine is two, okay? 
Then we can go ahead and take this one and bring it down and that'll be 281. And we can try the next step here, okay? So let's see, into 281, well, this number is a lot bigger than this, so I don't think, maybe we could double, not quite. So maybe let's do uh, 47 times five. Let's see what's going on there. So that's going to be seven times five is 35, carry the three. Five times four is 20, plus three is 23. Okay, it's 235. Can we do 47 times six, or is that a little bit too much? I think seven times six is 42, carry the four. Six times four is 24, plus four is 28. So yeah, 282 is just a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and say it goes in five times. So let's go ahead and put a five up here. So we have 25 point something, so five times 47, we said was 235. If we subtract here, 11 minus five is going to be six. Then we borrow, it said seven minus three would be four. So we have 46, okay? That's the remainder. And so let's go ahead and bring down the zero and let's go ahead and do this again. So we have 460. Now that's quite a bit more. Now we know 47 times 10 is 470, so it's too much. So it's gotta really be nine, I'm thinking, right? 47 times nine. Seven times nine is 63, carry the six. Four times nine is 36, plus six is gonna be 42, 423. So I'm gonna go with a nine here. Nine times this 47 is going to be, we said 423. If we go ahead and subtract 10 minus three, we have to borrow, that's gonna be seven. If we borrow, then it's a five minus two, which is gonna be three, so it's gonna be 37. And then we can bring down this six and do this hopefully just one more time. So that's gonna be 376, okay. Um, thinking here, nine's too much, so let's maybe try eight. 47 times eight, seven times eight is 56, carry the five. Eight times four is 32, plus five is 37. That's exactly 376, so let's put an eight up here. Eight times 47 is 376. So we see we get a remainder of zero here. So uh, again, if we go back to the beginning here, we had a negative divided by a negative or the opposite of the opposite. We can go ahead and take our quotient here and we are going to get a positive 25.98 or 25 and 98 hundredths because the opposite of the opposite is positive. All right, for number 27, we have negative 14 25ths divided by 21 35ths. Now keep in mind, when we are dividing fractions, we should rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So we're gonna keep, change, and then flip here, right? So if we rewrite this, uh, let's go ahead and move this negative to the top number here. So let's go ahead and keep this. So it's gonna be negative 14 over 25. If we keep that, then we uh, change the division sign to multiplication, then that's going to change that. Then we're gonna go ahead and flip the uh, 21 and 35 and reciprocate it, so it's gonna be 35 over 21. Now let's go ahead and just ignore the negative for a moment and just multiply the fractions like we normally do. Because we have a negative divided by a positive fraction, we know we're gonna get a negative answer. So let's just ignore this negative for now and then deal with it later, okay? Um, so this 14 breaks into seven and two. Again, try not to think about that negative right now. It could be a distraction. This 35 is really seven times five. This 25 on the bottom can break down into five times five and then this 21 can break into seven times three, okay? Now in terms of what can cross cancel here, well, we can go ahead and cross cancel this seven with this seven and this five with this five. So on top, we're left with two times seven, now two times seven, that's going to equal 14 on top. And then we have this five times three on bottom and that's going to be 15. So it's gonna be 14 over 15. Now, remember how we were ignoring this negative earlier? Well, a negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative. So we have negative 14 fifteenths for our quotient. Let's check out number 28. For 28, we have 32 over 27 divided by negative 24 over 63. So let's go ahead and keep change and then flip, okay? So if we go ahead and do that, let's keep this 32 over 27. 
and then let's go ahead and change this to a multiplication problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and keep this negative with the top number, so I'm gonna give it to the 24. So if we flip this or reciprocate this fraction, it's gonna be negative 24 is now on bottom, and then the 63 is going to be on top here, okay? Now we have a positive fraction times a negative fraction, so we know the answer is going to be negative. So let's go ahead and ignore the negative sign for now, and let's see if we can just multiply these fractions the way they are. All right, so 32, go ahead and write their prime factorization if you need to. It's gonna be two times two times two times two times two. It should break into five twos. Again, if you like cross canceling, you can do that too. For 63, go ahead and pause if you need to think about it. That's gonna be three times three times seven, okay? For 27 here, that's gonna break into three times three times three. And then 24, again, ignore the negative for a moment, is going to be two times two times two times three. Okay, so I wrote all the prime factorizations out. Let's see if we can cross cancel. Looks like we have two threes on top. I'm gonna to cross them out with two threes on bottom. Looks like we have maybe one, two, three twos on bottom. So we can cross off one, two, three twos on top. Okay, so on top, what do we have? We have two times two, which is four. Four times seven, that's gonna be 28. So the numerator here is going to be 28. And for the denominator, we have three times three, so that's going to be nine. All right, so we had a positive divided by a negative, which is going to be a negative. So you can leave your answer as negative 28 over nine, or writing it as a mixed number, nine fits into 28 three times. So this is three and one ninth, or negative three and one ninth. Okay, for number 29, notice how we have a mixed number here. So we have negative seven and one fifth divided by negative one and 36 40 fifths here. So we have a negative divided by a negative. So we know our answer is going to be positive. So if you'd like to just go ahead and ignore those negative signs because uh, they're not going to affect our answer because we have two negatives or two opposites. So we're going to get a positive answer. Okay, so before I keep change and flip, I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So let's go and do seven times five, that's 35 plus one, that's going to be 36. So let's rewrite this as a negative 36. Again, I'm just gonna give the negative to the top number here, negative 36 over five, and let's divide that by, and let's turn this uh, negative one and 36 40 fifths into an improper fraction as well. So one times 45 is gonna be 45, 45 plus the 36 is going to be, I think that's 81, right? And I'm gonna give the negative to the top. So I'm gonna say it's negative 81 over 45. Okay, now that we have a top and a bottom, right? We have numerators and denominators and they're not mixed numbers anymore. We can go ahead and keep change and flip here, okay? Now, at this point, I'm just gonna drop the negatives because they're not going to be important here. We're gonna get a positive no matter what. This is gonna be 36 over five, we keep change the division to multiplication. And if we flip, this is going to be 45 over 81. Okay, now if you want to, feel free to go ahead and write out all of the prime factorizations to cancel out, but I'm gonna practice cross canceling here. So five and 45, their common factor is five. So you can divide them by five, you get one and then you get nine. Okay, now you can go ahead and also cross cancel uh, with uh, 81, right? So uh, maybe 36 and 81, you could divide this by nine and you get four. You could divide this by nine and you get nine. Next, it looks like I can cross cancel or we can cross cancel uh, this nine and nine. Nine becomes one and nine becomes one because nine over nine is just equal to one. Going ahead here, uh, let's see, we really have four times one left on top and one times one on bottom. So we're gonna get four over one, which is really just equal to four. So that would be the quotient here. And it's a positive four, because remember, a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive because we had two opposites. Here is one final problem. For number 30, we have a negative eight and four sevenths divided by a positive eight and three ninths. So we have a negative divided by a positive. So we're gonna get a negative answer here. So I'm just going ahead and put a negative here right from the start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn these into some uh, improper fractions here, right? So if we go ahead and do eight times seven, that's going to be 56 plus the four, that's going to be 60. So this is gonna be negative 60 over seven. I'm gonna give the negative to the top. I'm not gonna keep change flip yet. Um, let's do eight times nine is 72 plus the three is 75. So it's gonna be 75 over nine. Okay, cool. Now if we keep 
and then we change and then we flip, we can go ahead and rewrite this as uh, negative 60 over seven times, if we change this to multiplication, multiply nine over 75. Okay, um, now let's see if we can cross cancel at all here. Uh, we can ignore uh, the negative sign for now, and if we just wanna write this as 60 over seven times nine over 75, that's also fine. Uh, we know the answer is gonna be negative. And if we cross cancel here, 60 and 75 can both divide by five. And so if we can divide that by five, we're gonna get 12, because 12 times five is 60. And then 75 divided by five is 15. Um, but you can notice here maybe that 12 and 15 still have something in common. So you can divide this by three and then we're gonna get four. We can divide this by three and we're going to get five. Okay, I think everything is relatively prime now, top and bottom. So four times nine is going to be 36. So it's gonna be 36 on top. And then seven times five on bottom is going to be 35. So we have 36 over 35. Uh, which we could also say is one and one thirty-fifths. Okay, so if we go ahead and write our answer at the top here, it's gonna be this negative 36 over 35, or we can say it's equal to negative one and one thirty-fifths. Again, we had a negative divided by a positive and all negative uh, rational numbers or integers divided by a positive one, a negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative answer like we got here. So there you have 30 different practice problems on dividing rational numbers. Again, when you're dividing, it follows the same rules as multiplying in terms of the integer rules, right? Um, but when you are you know, following those rules, you should be okay, just divide. Um, and then afterwards you're done dividing, you can go ahead and just think about how many opposite signs or negative signs you have. If you have an odd number of negatives, the answer is negative. If you have an even number of negatives, the answer is positive. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.